implicit bias. All of us, everybody uh, uh, is uh, ha has biases and, and implicit biases, un unconscious bias. It's, it's an attitude that, that we have, uh, uh, some perceptions that we have that don't really come to the surface, but they affect the way that we decide, they, they affect the way that, that we uh, discriminate, let me say, and uh, uh, they affect the, the way that uh, we engage other people. So regarding policing, let, let me put it like this. There, there was a uh, criminologist named Jerome Skolnick. Jerome Skolnick coined the term symbolic assailant. Uh, a symbolic assailant uh, is the prototypical criminal. Uh, in, in your eyes, if I ask you, in your opinion, what does uh, a burglar look like? Well, you would probably tell me uh, your perception of what the average burglar would look like, or what does a robber look like? You would tell me your perception of, of the average robber. Uh, and so uh, how that translates into uh, in policing uh, is that for a police officer who has implicit biases and and they and 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 we all do right. uh, then when he or she is looking for a robber uh, quite often their prototypical robber uh, the image in their mind of who that person is and what it looks like uh, typically comes to bear on their observations, okay? Mm -hmm. Just like uh, if you have been bitten by a dog at any point in your life, then you're probably afraid of every dog, uh, regardless of, of uh, the fact that you've only met that one that bit you. And so uh, police officers and, and other people, when, when we uh, have these images of people and, and in, in a crime related situation, we look for what we think that person is. So, so if we're looking for a robber, we're looking at the stereo, uh, typical, prototypical, uh, mm -hmm. symbolic assailant uh, kind of an image. Uh, and, and so uh, what implicit bias uh, research has shown us that our implicit biases, our stereotypical images, our, our biases and perceptions, a lot of times affect our decisions our, uh, and our reactions. And so if we think that uh, a meth dealer is a skinny guy with long brown hair, then, then when we're looking for a meth dealer, that's what we're looking for. And bad teeth. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so quite, quite often, uh, who we arrest, who we interact with, uh, is largely a consequence of our uh, beliefs and perceptions, and not necessarily reality. So that that that's the implicit bias angle. Absolutely, and I've uh, seen that play out in in many many ways. Uh, in, in fact, I I watched a study. Uh, a test recently. There was a beautiful young uh, black girl, a little African American girl, about five, and they had dolls in, you know, various hues from a very, you know, pale white doll to a brown skinned olive doll, uh, you know, uh, all the way up to a dark skinned doll. And they asked the little girl at five, beautiful little girl which one of these uh, dolls is a bad girl? And she said, the darker skin doll at five, it broke my heart. And, you know, um, just showing that that can be ingrained early on uh, and that's just gonna impact her. But if you take that against uh, another population, another ethnicity, I can definitely see where it's going to affect your decisions. And then we get driving while black and walking while black and barbecuing while black. Because as you said, there are people out in the community. It's not just uh, some law enforcement people whose implicit biases affect their decision making. I have them as well. I confront myself sometimes when something comes in my head. I'm like, where the heck did that come from? Is it images I'm seeing in the media? Is it some novel I read? I, I want to 
you know, confront that. And when I hear it from other people, I'll speak up, which is something we have to start, have to start doing is being more outspoken.